Greetings all! There are a number of misconceptions commonly in people's minds about the Panther, and though those of you paying attention probably are now aware of them, I thought it would be handy to have a quick reference video that you could link to the next time some lesser informed folks come up with the following statements. Panther was designed to counter T-34. To quote Hilary Doyle, There is a myth about that. Panther was developed more quickly because of T-34, but not because of T-34. The program to create a successor tank to the Panzer IV, much like the program for Tiger, predated 1940, if you go by the BW-40 program, and by February of 1941, MAN, who would eventually build Panther, was hard at work on its VK-20.02M, a medium tank with interleaved road wheel suspension on torsion bars with unsupported track and triple radius steering gear. Now, in fairness, I am splitting hairs a little bit. Encounters with T-34s and KV-1s set out a new basic requirement which the earlier designs, VK-20.02, VK-24.01 and VK-30.01 eventually evolved to meet, to include the sloped armor and a very high velocity cannon. Indeed, the MAN design was eventually chosen over the Daimler-Benz Teutonic T-34 uh, because of the amount of work which was already done, which allowed the MAN design to enter production more quickly. Panther II was developed in order to simplify production with the Tiger series. Panther was actually surprisingly efficient, costing only a little bit more than Panzer IV. If the factory had the physical capability to turn out Panthers, it could do so easily and cheaply enough. The real reason Panther II was developed was the thought that Panther would be unable to resist Soviet 14.5mm anti-tank rounds fired from the sides. The idea of sharing components with the Tiger II came about later. It turned out that, yes, Panther actually was vulnerable to the side, but it also turned out that if one hung side skirts on the hull, covering the gap between the upper hull and the road wheels, 14.5mm rounds heading for the hull side would be defeated. Since that solved the problem, there was no need to go to the hassle of developing yet another tank, and so Panther II was cancelled after just one hull was built. Panther was incredibly unreliable. This one requires a bit of nuance. Germany didn't spend anywhere near as much time during the war testing its equipment before fielding it, and teething troubles were dramatic. Its reliability for Operation Citadel, the Battle of Kursk, was atrocious. However, like engineers everywhere, the guys at MAN took the reports coming back under consideration and started to implement improvements, later models being far better. Was the final Panther as reliable as Sherman? No. But you know, really, what else was? That's not to say that there weren't still problems or issues. When a Panther went down for maintenance, it often was down for more man hours than any other medium tank, be it for changing a road wheel or pulling the transmission. The increased capability in battle has to be paid for by lesser chance of the tank being ready for battle in the first place. On the other hand, though the final drives were notoriously unreliable, replacing them was not really any worse a task than on any other tank. A careful, well-trained driver could indeed extend the service life of the components. The problem was that Germany was starting to run out of experienced, well-trained drivers, and telling crews not to use a capability like neutral steer in order to reduce stress on the system is almost akin to not bothering to put it into the tank in the first place. By mid to late 1944, the units were often saddled with large numbers of non-operational Panthers and this was not usually the fault of the lack of spare parts or the mechanic man hours to install them, more than the fact that you know, the tank just broke down in the first place. Panther introduced night fighting equipment. This one also needs some nuance. It is true that Panther was the first tank to see battle with infrared equipment for engaging at night, but this arguably is only because only the Germans were desperate enough to try it. The equipment in question is the FG-1250, a combination of spotlight and scope with an indicator relay to the gunner's position. It entered service for field trials in very late 1944. 
Now, this wasn't a new idea. The Americans had tried placing infrared on a Sherman in 1942, and the Soviets had fitted T-26s and BT-7 for night driving trials even before the war. It just wasn't considered worth the effort. The German equipment was only ever used on the Eastern Front because it was well known that the Western Allies had equipment which could see infrared, and eventually Panthers, which had the infrared equipment mounted, started to have it dismounted and be reconverted back to the original configuration, restoring stowage and ammo bins and so on, which had been removed to make room for the FG-1250 system. The idea then left the battlefield for almost two decades as technology started to catch up. So searchlights in the Korean War were white light, and it was pretty much the early 60s before tanks started commonly being fitted with active infrared again that was both rugged enough and capable enough to merit being fielded on tanks in the first place. The Germans should have never attempted to build Panthers and instead focused on Panzer IVs and Stungerschutz. This idea is based on the premise that the proven and now reliable Panzer IV would have been a better use of German resources and more Panzer IVs would have been better than fewer Panthers. This makes little sense. Yes, an individual Panther takes up more resources in terms of fuel and metal than an individual Panzer IV, even if the Reichsmark costs are similar. However, there are some other matters to be concerned about. If we were to presume that a later model Panzer IV, such as an H model, is more or less equivalent to a Sherman or T-34, it isn't, but let's presume, you still have the issue of trying to match production volumes with two nations which are churning out tens of thousands of tanks a year. The Germans could not keep up with equal quality tanks. And even if they could build that many, where would they get the qualified crews to man them all? Even when two Panzer IVs or three Stokes provides more overall capability than a single Panther, could the Germans provide fuel for them all? Germany obviously could not win by attempting to match the Allies with quantity. Quality was the only solution that they had. Unfortunately, the quality overmatch that they needed was not within the realms of what German industry could produce. So there you go. The next time that somebody over the dinner table says one of the above things, just point them to this video and smile. I'm Nicholas Morin, the Chieftain, and I will see you on the next one. Take care.